How's it going guys? Welcome back to the High Peaks Weekly Report. We are back. Sorry guys about the hiatus. I had to go off for a couple weeks because you know, it's mud season. I also went back to Ohio to visit family and there wasn't too much to talk about and just a really good time to reflect on the channel and a bunch of things that I have planned for the summer. I'm Jonathan Zaharik and you are watching the High Peaks Weekly Report. As many of you know, it's mud season, which means there's not too much hiking going on. First wanna say, don't expect one of these every single week, but I'll get them out as time goes on when I feel the need to update you guys about something going on in the park or something going on in my life or something that I think you might care about. I know many of you are very excited and anxious to come back to the high peaks to start hiking when the mud and snow is gone. Let's remember that there's always going to be mud, but uh, in terms of the snow, there's still plenty of snow. In fact, I'd probably say there's snow on trails on every single high peak right now as of this week. There's still several feet of snow up above like 4,300, 4,400 feet up on the trails and it starts at least at like three and a half thousand feet. The snow is not going away anytime soon and expect snow in the first week of June if you plan to come hiking then. So please be mindful of those conditions. It's gonna be around for a while and the bugs are not quite out yet. I've been out several days this week and not a single black fly. So that's pretty pleasing, but we know that's gonna change soon. And remember guys, while you're hiking out here, be a steward. Don't just say, but do, and educate yourself and others. Everyone that hikes here has a responsibility. Onto some main points. The long awaited Dix Range Trailhead is now open at Elk Lake. It's been, I think, almost two years since they opened it up and everyone's had to hike an extra five miles round trip from Clear Pond to Elk Lake. And it's open now. I talked to Elk Lake and confirmed this with them, as well as the Seward Range Trailhead Gate. You know, that's closed every other winter, I believe, three miles before the actual trailhead. And that is now open for the season as well. Many of you know about the parking posts that have been implemented along like three miles of 73. Still trying to figure that one out because I don't want to be riding my bike and have to dodge a car and then get sliced in half by one of these poles. But I know amongst all of you guys, there's a plethora of opinions on this. And you know, we could all agree that it might not necessarily be the best approach to what's going on right now, but uh, I guess we'll see how this plays out in the near future. In fact, some people even bent some posts earlier this week and they had to go in and fix them and then they bent them again. So clearly there's a lot of people who are unhappy about this. But again, none of this is permanent. It's all about working out the system and seeing what's gonna happen. All right, now I do wanna say I have a few plugs coming up here. I really need you guys to pay attention to this next one, okay? This is so important and I've been waiting months to really share this with you. As many of you know, I did the single season Winter 46 and created this documentary, short film, The Journey of a Winter 46er. If you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend you go check it out. But I spent all of 2020 winter pretty much photographing all 46 high peaks in the single winter season in high definition. These have been never before shown images and there's going to be a gallery show at the LPCA for about a month and a half of all of this work and the whole entire exhibit is based off of the Winter 46. It's a one of a kind exhibit that has never before been done and any one of you that's going to be in Lake Placid from June 6th to July 25th, June 10th is what I meant, June 10th through July 25th. I think you should go. By going to this, you can support me and my photographic work. Of course, it's free. And you also get to see all these images of all the mountains you guys love. And they're for sale too. There's a link in the description regarding this whole entire show so you can get a better idea of how to go to that and plan that around your time coming here. On to some next points. I would like to introduce to you guys Upstate Coffee Roasters. I personally didn't really know these people existed until like a couple weeks ago. And when I found out, I was like pretty excited because who doesn't love coffee? I'm sure a couple of you don't like coffee, but please don't, please don't tell me that. They sent me a wide selection of coffee to try out and to see what they're all about. And I am so impressed. Upstate Coffee strives to reflect upstate New York with their variety of experiences and tastes, their down to earth nature, and their balance of the past, present, and future. Their coffees are named after a lot of the lakes here, like Lake George, Avalanche Lake, Lake Placid, Lake Pleasant. Personally, one of my favorites is Avalanche Lake Light Roast. And they even have some really cool travel to go bags too, to be able to steep your coffee in some hot water. So go ahead and check out their website, link in the description, as well as their Instagram, Upstate Coffee Roasters. 
Next up, I would love to give you guys a chance to win something. I mentioned it in my last video, but Liquid IV. I've been able to partner with them and receive a lot of their product to influence my hiking, rehydration and hydration products. And I have an opportunity for you guys to win some of their products. They just released this amazing new pear flavor and here's why it's so cool. At Liquid IV, their mission is to help people everywhere live better lives by optimizing the body, hydrating those in need and bettering the planet. With every sip of the new pear hydration multiplier, they're paving the way for a world with less waste. This new flavor is ripe and juicy. It's sun drenched straight from the earth. They have an awesome variety of flavors and stuff on their website. And Liquid IV is what I use to hydrate myself before a hike and after a hike. And they're an absolutely incredible company, what they stand by. And when you purchase one of their products, you are supporting way more than your body but you're supporting a whole movement of helping others. To celebrate the summer, I'm gonna give a bundle pack away to one of you with four flavors in it. Now I know every, not everyone here has an Instagram, so all you need to do is click on the link below and submit your entry. If you wanna check out the rest of Liquid IV, make sure to check them out in the description below and also my code. If you guys purchase something through the link or my code below, you'll support me as well as their incredible mission and your body. Next up, Q&A, I asked you guys to submit some questions and I answer them every single one of these episodes. So go ahead and click the link below to submit your questions. Let's start off. Hope asks, what is the best high peak to hike solo? Honestly, it all depends on your experience and level out in, out in hiking. It could be, you know, anything, but let's theoretically say you have the experience to go and hike every single high peak solo. Um, if you really want to get to know yourself, then go hike Allen. That's a pretty challenging one to hike solo. But if you want what's a good one to hike solo, I think Big Slide. Big Slide's a really great solo hike. Next question, Max asks, do you know of anyone else planning on going for the 46 unsupported FKT this year? Um, I've heard probably at least four or five or maybe even six people who say they're going to attempt it this year. You can probably expect someone to attempt to break or to break the record every single year now because of the trend and hopping on it. Um, many of you know that I did attempt this twice last year um, and I won't publicly say if I will or will not be attempting it this year. It's kind of on my lower priority list if I were to, um, but it's definitely something that I know I would probably try again in the future. Um, but just know that if you plan on going for something like that, you will have other people going for it as well, probably at the same time. Zach asks, which do you find more intimidating? Jumping from the high point of Lower Split Rock Falls or hiking alone in the Allen Mountain Wilderness at night? Um, I know a few of you know my story of uh, my Allen Wilderness experience at night, um, but you guys only know what I actually share to the public. There's a whole lot more that you guys have no idea. Everything from things pacing me in the woods to entire trees getting ripped out and like tossed to the ground, like huge trees and the rocks being thrown at me. You guys only heard one story. You didn't hear actually everything else that happened to me. Um, so to answer that question, I would rather jump off a 150 foot cliff into the Marianas Trench. Uh, then go sleep in the Allen Wilderness at lone at night. Dave asks, I'm looking at doing the Dix Range via Elk Lake without Macomb this summer. Plan is to do two days and camping on one of the nights. Any good spots you recommend along the trail? Any good spots? Honestly, no. I mean, the whole range, you pretty much just hit the whole thing. There's no specific places um, that I think you should go hit. I think you should stay though at the Lillian Brook lean to, and then go up to Dix, down to Huff, Carson, Grace, and then come back and go down in between Carson and Huff to your campsite. That way you can skip Macomb and you don't have to go down the slide. The last question comes from Dan. He asks, have you ever done the trail going up the backside of Mount Haystack? And, and if you have, what is it like? I haven't yet. I gotta get myself to go into Panther Gorge first, um, but I've heard it's extremely, extremely steep. Not the steepest in the park. That award goes to the Gothics Cable Route, believe it or not, it actually has a 44% grade. I did all the math, trust me guys, I calculated every single possible steep section of the entire park. And uh, in terms of at least of a quarter mile section in the park, the Cable Route's actually the steepest. Last but not least, I asked you guys to submit your photos to Instagram using the High Peaks Report hashtag. As you guys slowly start coming back to the High Peaks, please submit your photos. Remember, put that in your stash of hashtags so I could repost it. The first photo comes from B2 Theroni, and he got this sick tattoo with his finishing number there, and uh, it's a sketched out view from Phelps. He also just had his first child and named him Colden. Congratulations. Next image comes from C Foss back. Here's a picture of what I think might be his mother on rooster comb in the clouds. And the last image comes from Sage's Summits on Slide Mountain in the Catskills. Not the Adirondacks, but we still like the Catskills, I guess. 
So anyways, guys, pure and simple weekly report today. Um, I do have a ton of things in the works and I know I always say that, but genuinely, like there's a lot of things I'm excited to bring to you uh, this summer. Really, really big things. Please, please look forward to those things because a lot of these things do revolve around you guys, my audience, which I appreciate and love you guys so much. Remember to follow my Instagram below so you guys can see what I'm doing on a daily basis and the high peaks on my story. Check out my website, maybe support me by buying an image or two. And if you see me on the trail, feel free to say hi. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.